I'm just going to talk today about the amazing repo here, ESP Home Soya Source GTM Virtual Meter. So Johannes Hubner of Open Inverter um, was using this guy's work to get an ESP32 or 8066 to send I think MQTT packets to his um, well he sent MQTT packets to the ESP32 and then this sent RS485 data into the uh, AC battery inverter so there's loads of videos um, of him doing that or it's two at least um, but I'm going to just talk about my experience of getting this set up today because I have managed to get it done so um, if we go back up to the top this is what you see in Home Assistant if you've got this sorted out um, and I have got this in Home Assistant uh, currently that is plugged into my laptop the ASP32 um, and I went around the houses and doing this I'm going to tell you initially the right way and then I'm going to tell you how I did it wrong or it shouldn't have really been wrong but it just didn't work okay so with the SP home typically you'd um, you can install it as an add-on to home assistant or you can install it standalone um, via Python um, and you can flash your ESP32 so this is an ESP32 here okay and that is what's collecting the data via the RS485 comes in here this thing to turns it into serial this is serial into the um, RS485 uh, into the ESP32 and then this thing wirelessly sends this data back to your home assistant or uh, your MQTT broker depending on what your system's like. So there's the wiring diagram of so that's the power um, inverter that's that little module there and that is that thing there so it's quite obvious. Um, so the two ways you can do it is you can put this line external component source github yada 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 into your yaml file or as he says just use one of the yaml files as provided. Um, and what he means by just use these YAML files is um, once you've got your ESP32 or uh, ESP8266 um, flashed for first use because it, it requires a wired connection first to get it set up and then you can use over the air and just provide the YAML file. Well then this, this line here is all that's actually needed to reference the software um, in his repository to make it work. However, having struggled with Home Assistant and the add-on of ESP Home to do this, and by that what I mean is if you go to ESP uh, to Home Assistant and you go to your add-ons and you go to ESP Home, so you open up your web UI once you've installed this, and here's one here, but what you would do is you'd go down to New Devices and you'd um, you'd continue or you'd do one or two um, I don't actually have this working on um, uh, what's the word um, HTTPS so secure socket so I mean you can try and do this you create la, um, or you can go ESP home web which I did and you can you know connect up your devices to this um, and it's saying no compatible devices found but it just doesn't want to there we go and then you can go connect to that and then it would prepare for first use and that's how you would set it up so that's how you can get this thing you know set up in its initial use but that's not really that doesn't get you very far I mean, if you're doing other stuff, other types of uh, ESP work, um, this this would be the way to go. But when I went back to Home Assistant, and you would then have this thing that sort of you'd go install on the thing that would pop up here, um, it just would get so far through the install process, and it would bomb out. And I looked up the error codes and it sort of said that maybe the Raspberry Pi doesn't have enough um, memory to compile all this because 
there's nothing really wrong with the code when you validate the code. So this is f frustrating and unfortunate. However, the point I'm trying to make today is actually it got it was achieved by doing these bits. This is really the way to do it. Is this second bit? So maybe you should put it the other way around. Um, I didn't use the cat function there to create a file with those things in. I use Notepad. Just be mindful that Notepad will put a .txt extension on it and it won't be seen properly. Um, that should be a proper ID of your network you're attaching the ESP32. That should be a proper password. If you're not using MQTT, you can get rid of those, but obviously you'll need them if in your secrets file if you are. Um, and I just used pretty much that file stock. However, because I'm using the Home Assistant API, I made sure I com commented out the um, MQTT stuff, or rather I just deleted it and commented in the API stuff. Um, and it's a bit of a red herring this because um, uh, when you're trying to do the install via this ESP Home add-on um, over the air, it's at the API stuff that it bombs out, but I think that's just a, a quirk of it being alpha numerically the first thing that it gets to that it can't do. Um, it's nothing to do with the fact that the source is invalid, so that is frustrating. But anyway, um, in order to install ESP Home, you need to install Python first. Just be mindful to tick the box that says in, um, add it to path because if you don't, it will not see pip3 on the command line um, and it'll just be hard work for you to go through the, the um, setting the folder that Python's into the path. And sometimes if you go to your environment variables and it says it's there, then PC may need a reboot just to make sure that it's actually caught up. So, um, yeah, install the SP Home, clone the repo, which get, gets the source onto your computer, change your directory to that repository, make your folder, uh, your file, sorry, that's got your secrets in, and make sure it's just .yaml, not .txt. Um, make sure that, um, and then just run this, and then that will give you an option about halfway through to say if you've connected um, your ESP32 via USB to your PC um, <coughs> it will either say you've got zero, one or two options if you've forgotten to put your um, power up your ESP32 and it's not on the network then it will give you no options if you've got it plugged in um, and it's not on the wireless network it might just go through, but what it did when I ran it, it said, oh, I can see this on the network, so you can do it wirelessly, or you've got it connected via your serial on channel 20 on your USB. Do you want to use that? So I chose that, and it was fine. It ran all the way through with no issues. So that is the bona fide way to do it. It's basically that option there. Debugging, uh, not got to that yet. Um, anyway, it works for now, or at least um, I need to order my RS485 TTL module. I thought I had one, but I don't, so that's going to be a few quid, not massive money. Um, but I know that the API is working, it's talking now to Home Assistant, so that's a huge hurdle overcome. And the next time I come around to do this, I uh, hopefully won't have to jump through any hoops. It was 12 seconds to flash it. It was probably about half an hour if I hadn't have been going around the houses trying all sorts of different things to get this to work. I mean, I started off trying to do it in Docker and that had its own problems on a Windows machine. Um, and ESP Home didn't work in its entirety and the Home Assistant add-on to ESP Home didn't work in its entirety. Um, so yeah, it's... The other thing you, you can get is this. This is quite good, this ESP Home Web thing. This does work quite well. But um, once you've done it prepared for first use, it will hopefully you'll be able to find your ESP32 on your network and it will 
um, prompt you, do you want to go to it? And then it'll bring up another tab which will have um, the IP address of your device and then it will have options to upload the binary. But the thing is you don't have a binary because um, the thing that creates the binary is the is this itself, is this line a VSP home run creates a compilation that uses that YAML file configuration to um, create a binary from this repository up here. Okay, so frustrating but possible and hopefully um, I just hope this helps somebody else trying to do the same thing as I was today. Um, this is me trying to figure out how to uh, get the sound working on this video because I've already recorded this once with no sound. Well done me. Um, and yeah, anyway, I'll stop chatting there for now and I hope uh, that in the next video I'll show you how this works with my setup and actually saving some power off the base load. Thanks for watching.